Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is an introduction to induction motors. Now, before uh, uh, we start talking about induction motor, let's recall the working of synchronous motors. Now, the synchronous motor has a stator winding here, uh, three phase windings, and so three phase supply is given to the stator. And there is a rotor, uh, a, a, a single phase supply is given to this rotor or DC supply actually is given to this uh, rotor. So what happens that in this stator a rotating magnetic field is produce, produced because of this three phase arrangement. And in the rotor also a, a magnetic field uh, produce, is produced but this is static it does not rotate but this is just a uh, DC input so it is producing a magnetic field and now when we combine the two that the rotor is brought inside the stator then what happens that this rotating magnetic fields interact with the static magnetic field of the rotor and the rotor starts rotating because of this rotating magnetic field. Now since both has power we are supplying to this uh, stator also and to the rotor therefore their rotation is quite synchronized. So just like uh, these two uh, persons they run almost uh, in synchroniz uh, synchronization or there is no gap or there is no lag between the two. So there is hardly any lag between uh, the um, stator magnetic field rotating and the rotor itself rotating. Now let's talk of the induction motor. Induction motor also has a similar three phase stator and it also produces a rotating magnetic field. But the difference comes in the rotor. Now to understand the rotor, let's see the transformer principle or recall the transformer principle. You know when input signal is applied to the primary windings, there is a voltage induced in the secondary winding and we connect some kind of a bulb or a load uh, which starts glowing because of this induced voltage. So this is the uh, basic principle of a, a normal transformer. Now the question is what will happen if we short circuit the secondary terminal? If we short circuit the secondary terminal then this induced voltage produced current will keep circulating within this. So the current produced by the induced voltage will circulate within the coil and this will produce its own magnetic field. So now let's see the rotor. This is called wound rotor. This has three uh, phase windings but the windings are short circuited through the slip rings. So just like this phenomena. So what will happen? The rotor will produce its own uh, magnetic field rotating magnetic field. So this is producing uh, its own magnetic field and now since this is stronger this is rotating so this will also start rotate. So the rotor will also start rotating but keep in mind that this does not have any power of its own it is only due to induced voltage from the stator that it is rotating. So it will be something like this. The stator is running ahead but the rotor is lagging. So as if stator is pulling the rotor. So there will be a phenomena of lagging speed which is called slip speed. Now this was one type of a rotor, there is another type which is called squirrel cage and you know this squirrel 
this is in, uh, encased in a cage so we have a rotor something like this so this is um, similar to this it's like a cage so this is a simple design of the rotor and the the terminals are here also short circuited so we are getting this phenomena so there will be a current flow through this and which will produce a magnetic field uh, around it okay now the, an induction motor is called singly excited machine as opposed to the doubly excited synchronous machine so we saw that in synchronous uh, both the stator and the rotors and uh, they get supply but in case of induction only the stator gets supply and the rotor has the induced voltage uh, in it uh, a brief about the rotor that we discussed the wand rotor uh, th these are the rings, slip rings, and what is done actually is that the brushes are connected and the end of the brush uh, is connected with an uh, arrangement like this. So some resistances are added. So in the starting, the external resistance are mainly used during the startup. So like this one is now going through resistance and then going to the other terminal and then going through resistance and coming back. But if we rotate this to the right, so this comes here and this will come here. So this is short circuiting through this and similarly the other terminal. So during the start we uh, incorporate the resistance but after that we short circuit. So this kind of a gives a flexibility. Uh, but this is uh, expensive, so in simple induction motors, the spiral cage rotors are used. And this is uh, one of the complete diagram of the motor cutaway beam. These are the stator windings and this is the uh, rotor. Okay, uh, during uh, our discussion we come across a term called synchronous speed. Synchronous speed is the also called synchronous speed of the motor and this is primarily the sta speed of the stator magnetic field rotation and this is given by uh, or is known as NSYNC and given by 120 Fe over P. Fe is the frequency of the supply voltage to the uh, stator and P is the number of poles of the rotor. Now the difference between synchronous speed and the rotor speed. Now we saw that the synchronous speed is higher and the rotor lags in catching the synchronous speed. So its speed is less and the difference between the two is called the slip speed and it is given by n slip is n sync minus n uh, rotor. We can uh, define the slip in percentage form. So slip S is N sync minus Nm divided by N sync into 100%. So this is the uh, actual definition of slip. And from here, if we multiply this or take this on the other side and then uh, take Nm of the left hand side and N sync S on the right hand side, so we'll get this formula. So this is also useful in finding the rotor speed. And there is another phenomena that since the rotor lags the stator field, therefore the frequency of the induced voltage in rotor will be different from the frequency of the power supplied in, in the stator and that frequency is given by this formula here FR is equal to SFE where S is the slip FE is the uh, frequency of the applied signal okay, now let's solve an example a 208 volt 10 HP 4 pole 60 hertz Y connected induction motor 
as a full load slip of 5% and we have to find these four parameters the synchronous speed, the rotor speed, the rotor frequency and the shaft torque. So the first one what is the synchronous speed of the motor? So we just saw the formula. So we straight away go to the formula. N sync is 120 FEP. Now FE you can see from here 60 Hz and P is 4 pole. So N sync 120 multiplied by 60 Hz divided by 4 is 1800 RPM. So this is the first part. Now we have to find the rotor speed. Now you know rotor speed is lagging or lags and the formula if you recall this was the formula for rotor speed 1 minus s and think s is given as 5% so full load slip is 5% therefore s is 5% or it is equal to 0 0.05 so we plug in that here, we plug in the n sync value to find the rotor speed. So rotor speed comes to be 1710 revolutions per minute. So now you can see that the stator magnetic field speed and the rotor speed uh, are different. Rotor is lagging the uh, n sync. Then rotor frequency, we saw the, this is the formula for frequency, so it's simple, we plug in the value of S and we plug in the value 60 Hz, so the rotor frequency is only 3 Hz. Now there is another way of calculating this frequency, we, we, we saw this formula and think is 120 FEP, from here we can say that FE is P over 120 into N sync and we are applying this for FE we write FR P over 120 and the speed is the uh, slip speed that is the difference between the two so plugging in that also we can get the same answer and finally what is the shaft torque of this motor at the rated load so we uh, this is the power and torque relationship power is equal to torque into speed so from here we can see that torque is power over speed so torque load is p out over speed uh, omega m angular speed so p out we we, we know it was 10 hp we convert this into watt by multiplying by 746 watts per hp now this was uh, uh, this is omega m that is 2 pi nm so nm we had found this we add 2 pi and then uh, convert it into second dividing by 60 so we get the answer 41.7 newton meters so i hope uh, this gives you an idea as to how to solve this simple problem and what are the basic uh, idea behind working of the induction motor. Thank you.